Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss business combinations. Specifically, we're going to be starting with chapter one and within chapter one, I'm going to be focusing on investment and equity securities using the fair value method. So we're going to learn on how to account for investment using the fair value method. Now bear in mind, this lecture is designed specifically for CPA candidate. In other words, if you are looking for more detailed information about this topic, if this was, if you feel this was, this explanation was not deep enough for you, please use my advanced accounting course to learn more about this topic. But this session is based on my CPA exam notes that I provide on my website, farhatlectures.com. So let's go ahead and get started. And how do you account for investment and in equity securities? Well, it all depends on the degree of percentage what ownership do you own in this company and your ability as an investor to control the other company what does that mean well you could own between zero to ten percent of the company you could own 25 percent you could own 40 percent of the other company well depending on the percentage of ownership you will determine how to account for this investment okay whenever an investor has between zero and twenty percent so if you own between zero and twenty percent of of the stock of the common stock of the company the interest does not have a significant influence we assume here because you own between zero to twenty percent you don't have influence you don't have enough voting power you don't have enough stocks to have a saying in the company under those circumstances you will be using the fair value method which is the method i will be covering in this specifically in this session now when your percentage is between 20 and 50 percent now you own more than 20 but less than 50 percent now the assumption is the investor will have the ability to influence the investee the company that they invested in under those circumstances we would use the equity method and what is the equity method we would learn about the equity method in the next session now if you own more than 50 percent 50 percent plus you assume to have control an investment of more than 50 percent in the investees common stock create a parent subsidiary the parent let's assume the parent is the gap company and the subsidiary is old navy old navy is the is the subsidiary for example gap stores the gap the company that sells clothing they own more than 50 percent of the company called old navy well guess what gap is the parent company old navy is the subsidiary and what they do and under those circumstances the two companies will be able to consolidate unless unless old navy is going through a bankruptcy then they cannot consolidate under normal circumstances they would consolidate now bear in mind because this is cpa session cpa review session in addition gap also they have guidelines if you have something called variable interest entity sometimes if you have a variable interest entity in another company you also have to consolidate with that other company what is variable interest entity there's a one whole session about variable interest entity but the point i'm trying to make here is yes we look at your percentage to determine whether you have control or not but there's another method this is percentage means you're voting the more stocks you have the more voting power you have then we have a model called the vie model so so under under some circumstances you might own zero percent of some company and you still consolidate you assume to have control over that company how we'll cover the vie in a separate in, in a separate recording but the point is bear in mind you have a percentage level and also you have a vie model and this is a picture of the percentage model let's review zero to twenty percent you have no significant influence we would use the fair value and if we're using the fair value we're going to see shortly that any changes in the fair value goes to net income will work will work on that shortly if you own more than 20 but less than 50 you assume to have a significant influence and this is all a review under those circumstances we will use the equity method don't worry about the equity method we'll cover that next if you own more than 20 percent you assume to have control you own more than 50 percent think about it if you own more than 50 percent you can vote yourself to be in control of the company you have control under those circumstances we consolidate and we're going to have to go over a few sessions over consolidation and we'll work on consolidation so let's go ahead and dive into the notes now what are equity securities well equity securities includes various types of ownership shares such as common stock preferred stock the rights to acquire and dispose of those shares such as options 
calls, puts, warrant, all of those are equity securities. What is not equity securities? Redeemable preferred stock, convertible bonds, treasury stocks. Those are not classified as equity securities because they don't provide you with any ownership interests. Now bear in mind, when we talk about ownership interests, <coughs> sorry, specifically, the equity securities we are referring to are common stock because common stock usually the only type of security that gives you voting power. And the voting power is what gives you that influence or no influence. This is, it's an important point to, it's, it's an important point to point out. So preferred stock, even if you own older preferred stock, you have no control because you don't vote. If you don't vote, you have no saying in the company. So when, when a company owns between zero to 20 and another company, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is a review, they don't have a significant influence. It accounts for the investment using the fair value with gain and losses reported immediately in the income statement, which we'll see that. Now, under some circumstances, let's assume the fair value of the equity securities. Let's assume you own common stock in a particular company, but that company is private. What does that mean? It means we don't know the fair value of the stock. If it's a public company, it's easy. Under those circumstances, GAAP will allow you to use the cost method, but you have to test the investment for impairment. This is if you cannot find, practically find, the fair value of the investment. Okay. Again, it's important to note that when assessing whether the company has significant influence, the amount of common stock, not preferred stock, is what we look at because common stock give you voting power. So if you own stocks in PepsiCo, in Walmart, in Coca-Cola, in Apple Computers, in Amazon, each stock will give you one share one stock gives you one uh, one vote so you have to have the voting power so let's take a look at how to account now let's dive into the accounting part of an investment at fair value okay in the investor's book the main journal entry associated with investments accounted for using the fair value consists of the initial investment and recording subsequent dividend and obviously if you sold the investment so when we are using the fair value first we have to determine what is our cost the initial investment and what happens subsequently after we record the investment what happened and this is what we need to work on when the fair value method is used the total value of the investment and the investee represent the total investment cost and is equal to the fair value of the consideration paid so how do you record the initial investment? How much did you pay for it? Plus any legal cost. So if you paid any legal cost, you add that to your investment. So the journal entry would look something like this. You debit the investment and investee, you'll have an investment, which is an asset. And you will credit, if you paid for it, you will credit cash. Or if you paid stocks, if you issued stocks to the other party, you will credit common stock and additional paid in capital. So notice you could either pay cash, common stock, or basically a combination. You can pay some in cash, some in common stock. Now bear in mind, once again, you record the investment based on the consideration paid plus any legal cost. How to account for dividend received? What happened if they, if they, if they pay the dividend? when the investee pays dividend. When the investee distribute dividend, the investor recognizes the dividend as dividend revenue. Now bear in mind, this is we're using the fair value method because if we're using something other than the fair value like the equity method or consolidation, we have to learn how to deal with this. As long as the dividend is paid out of cum cumulative earnings, in other words, it's coming out of net income. Any excess dividend, so if they pay you dividend in excess of their earning, it's gonna be considered the return of capital and it's gonna reduce our investment, which we will see an example how to do so. So to record the entry for dividend received, we'll debit cash and credit dividend revenue, assuming this is a non-liquidating dividend. Non-liquidating dividend means they are paying us the dividend from their earnings. So they made a profit and the assumption is the dividend is coming out of earnings. Now, if dividend is coming if the payment is coming not from earning, the company is not making a profit and they pay us dividend, we debit cash and we reduce our investments. It's considered return of capital. So highlights, fair value method dividend received are recognized as dividend revenue. Again, to the extent of the cumulative earnings, liquidating dividend are deducted from the investment account, which we'll see an example shortly. Okay, sale of the investment. The investment is reported on the balance sheet at fair value, and we keep that fair value up to date. 
when sold the investment should be written off we'll write it off and the difference between the selling price and the amount reported at fair value is considered gain or loss actual gain or loss on the income statement which we'll see an example and it's time to look at an example on january 1st company a paid 75,000 to purchase 4,000 shares of the 50,000 shares of company B. So A is buying B. In addition, A incurred and paid 7,600 in legal costs. A little bit of expensive, but that's fine. It's for the sake of the illustration. At the end of year one, company B has a retained earning of 178,000 and paid cash dividend of 300,000. Notice, I'm giving you an example where the dividend paid is in excess of retained earnings. It means we're going to have a liquidating dividend. First, determine the percentage of ownership of company A and company B. And why do we need to know this? To determine how to account for this investment. Well, let's think about it. We own 4,000 out of 50,000 shares. We own 8% of company B. Well, if we own 8% of company B, which method are we going to be using? fair value method fair value method now that's easy now we know we need to find we need to use the fair value method prepare the journal entry to account for the investment at acquisition well at acquisition we we paid 75000 plus 7600 well under those circumstances we paid 82600 which is again the cost plus 1000 uh sorry 75,000 plus 7,600 75,000 75,000 plus 7,600 we debit the investment and we credit cash since we paid cash now let's assume that company a instead of purchasing the investment using cash issued 5,000 shares of its $10 par value common stock at $15 so their stock is selling at $15 that's their stock so if we take let's just make sure we all have we have the numbers down so 5000 5000 shares times $15 is 75000 so we paid for the company 75000 by issuing shares well first let's 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 issue the shares we credit common stock 5000 shares at $10 which will give us common stock of 50000 we're going to credit cash because we have to pay for the legal fees separately. That's the assumption here. We paid for the legal fees separately in cash, 7,600 credit cash. The investment, we're going to debit the investment, 75,000 plus 7,600. That's the investment. And the remainder is a plug, which is additional paid in capital. Always keep additional paid in capital as the last journal entry. This is assuming we issued stocks to buy company B. Now determine the value of the investment at year end and prepare the journal entries related to dividend received and the revenue earned by company B as of year one. Well, let's see. When the fair value method is used, the value of the investment is affected by the changes in the fair value of the investment and is reduced by the amount of liquidating dividend. So if we receive any liquidating dividend, we reduce the investment by that. Noting that liquidating dividend are those dividend paid in excess of retained earning, which I already told you in this example, I gave you a payment of dividend in excess. So let's see. Company B has had retained earnings of 178. They paid $300,000 in dividend. Well, therefore, out of the 300,000, okay, 122 is what? 122 is liquidating dividend because out of the 300,000, we could all only assume 178 is dividend and the remainder is liquidating dividend. Okay. Now, company A owns 8% of company B. Well, if it's if it owns 8%, we're going to be receiving 8% of what they paid. 8% of 300,000 is 24,000. Now, we're going to take this 24,000 Okay, the amount segregated between non-liquidating dividend, which is 178 times 8% in liquidating dividend, because the amount also we own 8%, we're also receiving some liquidating and some non-liquidating dividend. So 178 times 8% will give us 14,424. Therefore, if we have 24,000, we're going to be receiving 24,000 in total. We're going to be splitting it between 14,000. 240 as non-liquidating and the remainder 9760 as liquidating dividend which is the difference between 24000 and 14224 let's take a look at the journal entry we debit cash 
24,000. Our non-liquidating dividend, which is dividend income or dividend revenue, 14,240. And we credit the investment of 9,760. Now bear in mind, what, what you need to see is this. If this is your investment in B, in company B, in company B, you started the investment, remember. You started the investment at 86, let's see how much did we started the investment for, um, 82,600. You started the investment at 82,600. Now you reduce, you're going to reduce the investment by 9,760. Now you have a new value for the investment. Okay. Now, given that the investment is accounted for using the fair value, company A would not record any journal entries recorded to income earned by company B. So our, you ignore the income earned by company B because we're using the fair value method. Now assume that the securities were sold on January third year two for eighty two thousand seven fifty so now we sold those stocks for eighty two thousand seven fifty what happened well again let's go back and look at our investment again we are keeping track of our investment in b company we started at eighty two again eighty two thousand six hundred eighty two thousand six hundred then we reduced our investment by 9760 let's see what was our investment by the time we made that we made the sale 82600 minus 9000 9760 our investment is worth 72840 72840 now we sold the investment well if we sold the investment we have to remove it we have to credit the investment 72,840 and this is the credit and we sold it for 82,750 well the difference be between 82,750 and 72,840 is a gain of 9,910 now bear in mind on the CPA exam they may tell you you sold only 50 percent or 40 percent so what you do is if you sold only 50 percent of this you will take 72,840 times 50 percent that will be your cost and you will compare that to how much you sold it for to determine whether you have a gain or a loss or you multiply it by 40% if you sold 40% or 30% or whatever that percentage is. In this example, I assumed I told you you sold everything, therefore the investment in, in B is gone. Now again, at, at the end of this recording, this is this is for CPA candidate. If you want more details, go to farhatlectures.com where I have an advanced accounting and you should have if you have subscription to my CPA resources, you have subscription to the other one, you'll have access to it. In the next session, we would look at investment and in equity securities using the equity method. Once again, if you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing now. Go to farhatlectures.com and work additional multiple choice questions to, to consolidate this knowledge. Good luck. Study hard. I'm always here to support you. And good luck.